Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me today. We're in Matthew 20, so go ahead and be opening your Bible there. And as you do, I just want to remind everybody that this Friday, Christmas Eve, we have th- uh, two worship services on Christmas Eve. One is at 3 o'clock. The other is at 5. Identical services, candlelight services. Um, the 5 o'clock service only will be live stream. So we want you, if you're in town, to worship with us at either 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock. And if you're not able to do that, join us for the live stream at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve as we worship uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in Matthew 20, what, what God spoke to me personally and that I want to share with you is how challenging it can be in life to be selfless to think about others, to not always uh, think about how things are impacting me or why me or, you know, uh, to get my eyes off myself, but to think of others and seek to serve them first, how how difficult it can be not not to compare myself to others or for us as humans to, to not be jealous of the good experiences that other people have. Someone someone is given an opportunity or they uh, they receive something and in our mind we might be happy for them, but we're thinking, well, why not me? I kind of deserve that too. Um, the, the, I guess the point is that quite often as human beings, me, self, are at the center of our thoughts. No matter what's going on around us or happening in other people's lives, it's hard for us not to think about self. How does that reflect on me? How does that make me feel? Why not me? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And in Matthew twenty one, or Matthew twenty rather, uh, Jesus deals with this. He begins in the first sixteen verses by telling a parable. Now, remember when Matthew writes this, what he's doing is weaving together stories from the life of Jesus um, to 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 make points to teach. And the first 16 verses is the parable of the, of the farmer, the landowner, if you will, who went out early in the morning and hired people to work in his fields all day and said, I'll pay you this much. They agreed to that. He goes back out at the third hour, which is 9 a.m., hires some more. He goes back out at noon, hires more workers. Out at 3 in the afternoon, hires more workers. And then at 5 in the afternoon, goes out and hires even another group of workers. And then in the evening, when the work is done, he brings all of them in and he pays the last ones hired first. And you'll remember from the first 16 verses, He pays those who went into the field at 5 p.m. and only worked a brief period of time the same amount that he had promised to those that started early that morning. And so all the guys who had been working in the field started thinking to themselves, wow, how much are we going to get? How much am I going to get? Well, the guys who went into the field at 3 o'clock got the same amount as those who went in at 5. Those who went started working at noon, same amount as those at five. Those who went to the field at nine, same as those who worked started at five. And those who went early in the morning, you know, surely we're going to get paid more. No, same amount. And of course, they complained, and the owner said, "Did I cheat you? No. I, I, you agreed to this. I promise. This is what I, I'm, I'm keeping my word. I have a right to be generous." With others, I'm, I'm not being unfair or you, to you or cheating you, but I have a right to do with mine what I want to be generous to others. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming sermon and make make a, a key point. But but it sets the tone for everything that happens in in chapter twenty. And then the next thing that Matthew records in verses seventeen and following is Jesus telling the disciples that he's going to Jerusalem and he will be crucified there. And then immediately after that, Matthew records the mother of James and John coming to Jesus and asking him to give them a privileged seat by him in his kingdom. And, of course, Jesus does not agree to that. The other disciples hear that request. What happens? They get upset, and it creates dissension among the disciples, among the 12. Um, And then Jesus does some teaching in verses 25 and, and following. He says, you know that out there in the world among the Gentiles, they lorded over one another, but with you, my followers, it's not to be that way, that if you want to be great in my kingdom, rather than bossing people around, you will become a servant. And I think Matthew wove together all these 
experiences and all these teachings of Jesus in this chapter to make the point that as human beings and then as followers of Jesus, as his disciples, one of the things that we have to deal with and, and work with the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome and be better at is not always thinking about me first. The parable of the workers in the field, me first. Even when, when, when the owner's being generous. But yeah, you were generous with them. You should have been more generous with me. I deserve it. Me first. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm going to, to die for you. And right after that, can we have a special place by your side in heaven? And that me first mentality created division among the disciples. And then Jesus drives home his lesson. It's about serving one another, not lording things over one another. This is Christmas week, celebrating the birth of Jesus, the incarnation of Jesus. Christmas is Jesus saying he's thinking about us more than himself. Now, we do that a little bit in the giving of gifts, right? But even in the giving and receiving of gifts, if we're not careful, we can be thinking, oh, man, why didn't they get me a better gift? Me first. Part of following Jesus of being his disciples is spending our life learning how not to always think about me, but about him and about others. Christmas should remind us to do that. But following Jesus means doing that year-round. Maybe a commitment you can make to Jesus this Christmas is to grow in selflessness and sacrifice and other first, less me first, being more like him. Hey, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you tomorrow.